Yeah, and I'm glad what you just said rings so true. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I cannot point to a time in my life that I felt comfortable. I'm always like, okay, let's go. What's next? What What's my goal? What do I hope to achieve? Yeah. And it all starts with your vision and your purpose. And that sounds so like out there, like it's impossible to find your vision. Like God has to really come and knock on your door and say, here's your vision. Yeah. But that's not the case. Just look within yeah. and think of something that feels right to you. Mm-hmm. Even if it feels impossible to do, right. think about it, focus on it and work towards it, you know? Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. There's actually a Japanese saying called ikigai, mm-hmm. and it's the uh, it's meaning of life worth or the meaning of life. And it's basically the way that you find your purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's asking yourself these four questions. What are you good at? What do you love? What does the world need? And what can you get paid for? And at the intersection, it's kind of like a Venn diagram, right? And at the intersection of all those at the center, is your purpose in life, your ikigai. Ooh. And so wh- when I tell people, they're like, how do you find your purpose or how do you find your vision for your life? For me, like I said, it's a lot of self-discovery. It's a lot of asking myself these questions. Who is Jordan Nishizaki? What do I want to do? What do I want to be known for? What is my legacy? Um, all these different things. But I think being able to ask myself those four questions in detail and specific is a very clear path. Like, okay, I at least have something here that I can pick up and move. But sometimes people don't ask themselves or I ask, you know, people in my network, what are you good at? Sometimes they're like, well, let me think about that. I don't, I don't know. what I was like, take some time, you know, here's some four questions, you know, journal, write it out, journal, take some time because it's going to take, it took me years to figure out this vision and this purpose and to be able to write it down and define it and to clearly communicate it. Mm -hmm. But once I was able to do that, I feel like so many things just started falling into place because I was walking in God's will for my life. Exactly. Exactly. And also ask your friends, good friends or family members, what am I good at? What stands out about me? They'll tell you, you know, they'll tell you for me, it's you always want to help people. You're compassionate. You care. This, this, that. Like you go out of your way to do things for people. And funny enough, the legacy I want to live or leave for, you know, the world is to be a giver. Like, that's crazy. But that's, you know, really, I know that that's what I'm good at. I know yeah. that that's what makes me feel good. It's self-discovery. It's yeah. what you said. Oh, I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. And the truest of friends and the truest of family <laughs> will yeah. tell you the real stuff. Because uh, I asked my, my dad that. I was like, hey, what are some some words to describe who I am? And I was asking my parents this. Mm-hmm. And the first word that came to my dad's mind was, I... You're a schmoozer. <laughs> you're, you're, you're arrogant. I was like, ah, oh, thanks, Dad. I appreciate it. Those are exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, but I mean, in a sense, like, <laughs> that's just, we're, oh, he is, he's hilarious. He's something. But we're, we're two very opposite in some ways. But he's, um, I mean, like you said, the sacrificial love. Like I asked him, like, Dad, what is your purpose in life? And, you know, what, what type of legacy do you want to leave? And, you know, I same with my mom. And sometimes, and, and they're in their 60s. Um, well, I'm not yet. But um, they're they're like, I, well, I don't know. I was like, well, has anyone asked you that? Have you thought about that? Yeah. Uh, some people don't, that doesn't come across their mind. But one thing that they actually brought up and I absolutely love, they're like, Jordan, we want to give you as much success in life and give you all the tools to be successful. We want to sacrifice as much love so that you can go and do it, you know? And I was like, and it just hit me. I was like, that's, that makes sense. Everything that they've done, they've sacrificed their personal careers, their personal agendas with what they wanted to do uh, to give me and my siblings, my two sisters, the best life we could give, uh, we could have. And they gave me that foundation. And like what you said, they didn't come from an entrepreneurial background. They have, I mean, my dad, um, they just don't understand what it means to be an entrepreneur or how to find that success, right? It's like kind of crazy to them. And like, sometimes I gotta, I gotta remind myself that when I'm asking for advice, just like, you know, where, what is their background and what, what do they know? What are they comfortable with? But you know, finding ways to to understand who they are and the sacrifices that they made for me to get where I am. I'm like, all right, I, I, I'm i going to go do it, you know, yeah. and to be able to bring generational wealth to my family from their sacrifices is the greatest gift that I can give back to them. Yes. I love that. And yeah. Can we take a moment to talk about like just 
I, I don't know if we should call them diverse or like immigrant parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what? They are not talked about or like, just I, I don't know admired enough mm. I, I think about my parents and they definitely sacrificed for us you know they are both highly educated in syria had very prominent positions yeah they came to the states and their degrees were not acknowledged in the u.s mm. at all so you're talking wow. about masters and PT, phd level individuals coming here and having to work third shift at kroger's bagging groceries yeah or the toll booth or just like these jobs to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And they did that out of love and sacrifice for their kids, you know? Yeah. And so they set us up in this position where we can do things like look within. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we yeah. can look within and find our purpose. For them, it was like, I'm trying to feed you yeah. and make sure you have a roof over your head mm -hmm. so that you have better opportunities. Yes. You don't have to worry about eating. Right. I got you. Right. And now we're doing things like, really focusing on things that inspire us and yeah. motivate us and then you know changing our family's life right, and right. imagine our kids yeah they're gonna be so ungrateful i already right. know <laughs> no we gotta raise them right we gotta be like hey we yeah. we didn't get these opportunities for nothing go talk to you, go spend a couple nights with the grandparents yes. and and learn what it's like yeah um but yeah shout out to all the immigrants uh families parents uh people first off and this is what I think uh, Americans should do more is we should travel more because traveling to me gave me such a global perspective and a curiosity to learn about other cultures. Uh, and we just don't have that. We have like this kind of uh, ignorance and entitlement in a, in a way, and it kind of helps out. But we don't understand how hard it is to pick up and move your life, yeah. go to a country that uh, a language that you don't really speak or um, that is not your first language mm -hmm. and raise a family have a job, you know, pay your bills. It's hard enough right now yeah. <laughs> to do that here in America. Imagine going across, you know, to another country and doing that. Yeah. And just the, like you said, the amount of sacrifice, love, um, they're the most unselfish people out there. Like they're so selfless yeah. and the love that they have, you don't always see it. And I, and again, this is me growing up. I didn't really understand the sacrifices right. that they made uh, for me to have the life that I have now. But now looking back, I'm, I'm so grateful. Yeah. And I just want to say if, you know, if you're an immigrant or your parents are an immigrant or um, that's part of your family, like, I just want to let you know that you're seeing, you're heard and your sacrifices are not for nothing mm -hmm. and that you're paving the path for your family to have a better future. Yeah. And that definitely should should not go unnoticed. I agree. We love you guys. <laughs> yes. There's um a poet, what's her name? Is it Rupa Rupi? Do you know who I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah, I've heard I think I've heard the name. I have to remember, but okay. she has this beautiful poem about immigrant parents. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. You know, she says things like your your beauty is basically it's like um Oh God, I wish I could just pull this up for you. But she she says, you sacrificed, you came to a country that'll never accept you as their own. Your language, your your accent is so obvious. People are always gonna villainize, villainize yeah. you. You're so educated, you sacrificed yeah. so much. People will never see that, you know? Yeah. And then you come here and you're trying to make it and your, your relationship starts to fall apart. They talk about all this stuff, wow. but then at the very end, and it sounds so depressing because it kind of is. And yeah. then at the end, she goes, if that's not the most beautiful poetic thing I've ever heard about having such a tragically beautiful life, yeah. she's like, I don't know what it is. Wow. Like, like, wow, you guys did that, you know? Yeah. So I always think about my parents and I actually have to remind them a lot. Yeah. Say, look what you guys have done. Like, don't give up now. Don't right. don't be, you know, defeated by what society gives you. Like the society could never do yeah. what you did. Yeah. People could never move in their thirties. Yeah. In new language. Like, you know, remember who you are. Exactly. And I would say that to everybody, like to all of us. Mm. You have to really remember who you are, what you're capable of, uh, and don't let anyone tell you any different. You know, if you believe something about yourself, it's true. That's what it is. Oh, that's so good. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. And it, it's just so so true. Um, just to be able to understand that. And and honestly, one thing, one of the gifts that I want to give back to to my mom, I actually told her this the other day. Um, and this like really helps motivate me. But I am excited to retire my mom, like more than anything else. And I told her, I said, Mom, I'm gonna pay you more than you get paid right now. It's your job. Mm -hmm. 
And the only thing, yeah, this is kind of funny because she still she still does my laundry. So shout out to my mom. Oh, Lord. Um, but here's the thing. I said, and my dad sometimes like makes fun of me and like I try to like my I know my neighbors see me pull up and bring my laundry basket in. It's like the most humbling thing. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. But so you know, the funniest thing is I tell you, I told my mom, and she actually she beat me to it, but she was like, well, you're going to pay me to do your laundry? I said, yes, I'm going to pay you $60,000 to do my laundry yeah. by yeah. every year uh, and be my personal advisor. And I'll be proud of it, you know? And so like for me, that's what I'm chasing. That's like, uh, that to me is the most rewarding thing that I could ever give back to my mom to, to say, hey, listen, you don't got to work again. Yeah. You know, you can go and you can spend your money however you, ever you like. You can go travel. You yeah. can spend time in Florida or across the world. You can get that new kitchen. You can get that new car. Like you don't got to wait for anything anymore and you don't have to sacrifice mm-hmm. for your family. Uh, and I want to get her into a space where she's being her optimal self and how much that our family is going to reap from that, from her being in that space. Uh, what is something that motivates you to continue pursuing your dream and your passion to build and grow GK Loco? Yeah, I think you touched on it. I'm very motivated by giving back to my family. I mean, that's number one for me. Family is everything and not just family, my community too. I always say to my friends, if I make it, you make it. Like we're all in this together. I want to uplift my community Um, if you didn't know, I grew up in Columbus City Schools. I went to Woodward Park Middle School and it was the best experience I could have had. We were a very diverse group of people. Yeah. A lot of the people in my group went on to do amazing things against all odds. We have very successful entrepreneurs, engineers. We have lawyers. We have doctors, directors Mm -hmm. of nonprofits. We've done quite a bit from Columbus City Schools. And, And this is my network, but I would love to give back to just the Columbus community because we're kind of an anomaly. There's a lot of people who don't get the opportunities that we had. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm very motivated about giving back. The first people I want to give back to, they're my family, you know. I talk about them and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Like, I want to retire them. I want to show my parents that what they did was worth it. Yeah. You know, I just appreciate it a lot. And and I just remember that all the time. Like, you know, it's it's for my parents, my siblings. Yeah. My friends, my community, and then for my future kids. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I love mm-hmm. love hearing where you're going, and um, which is why I think we saw such an instant connection and had like, oh, let's collaborate together because we have such you know like minds in that way, and being able to use both of our platforms to to share stories, or if there's someone in my network that needs a lawyer, hey, have an amazing lawyer who's uh, going to continue to help me and my businesses grow. Um, you know, connect with Gaia. And so just be able to to send people your way or be able to help support each other is, is kind of what I'm looking forward to. But who or what is your biggest inspiration? Oh my gosh. That's a good question too. Okay. Who or what? I think my grandpa, I would say, he passed away. God rest his soul. But he oh. passed away during COVID. And mm. he came from Syria. He was living with us for a while. And during that time, I asked him questions, like yeah. a lot of questions. Oh. Have you guys ever asked, have you asked your grandparents questions about their life? Oh, yeah. I I love it. Yeah. It's given me such a story and pride to be a Nishizaki. Yeah. And like, listen, they have lived through World War II. And like, what was your life like during that? Um, like my grandma was in the Japanese internment camps and my grandpa was in Japan and had his house bomb, like all these different things. So yes, I love hearing about the stories of the grandparents. So yes. See, that's it. And I remember you shared that with me and I was yeah. like, that is so cool. Cause yeah. you know, my grandpa, he's been through some stuff too. And yeah. I asked him a lot of questions and he was an entrepreneur, which oh. I love to hear, had multiple businesses. He had seven children and he was the sole provider. Wow. And he did that through entrepreneurship. Wow. You know, he owned several businesses at different times, different yeah. types of businesses. OK, yeah. so he was someone I really looked up to mm-hmm. and he was fun. You know, he had, I believe in work hard, play hard. Absolutely. He played, you Absolutely. Know? 
So I just loved hearing his story, seeing yeah. that he was able to do it before technology was a thing. Mm -hmm. He was successful enough to take care of an entire household of seven kids. Phenomenal. To this day, you know, he's passed, but his family's still well taken care of. Absolutely. Um, so he was a huge inspiration for me, yeah. but not to discount my parents, yep. my yep. brother, my sister. My brother's also an entrepreneur. My mm -hmm. sister works extremely hard, a mother, full-time student and employee. Yeah. At jp morgan so she so just like the people around me showed me that like slagging off is not okay you, you know i love it i love it so you learn through your past which is great and the yeah. people around you so shout out to your family mm -hmm. uh for and your grandpa for being your biggest inspiration i uh, love hearing it. it's important to hear the stories before we wrap up and, and give advice to any lawyers or entrepreneurs starting their journey i want to bring a little uh pop culture in so um, for, for me, I, I love music and I know you, I know you do as well. Um, and I have like my hype songs, right? I have my hype people. Yeah. I know you like Backstreet Boys. I know you like Lil Wayne. So shout out to Lil Wayne, <laughs> which I did not ex expect from you at all. Um, what is your go-to hype song and hype artist? If you're going to come into the podcast or you're about to give a speech or like, Hey, I'm starting my day. We're going to do something. Um, mine is future march madness is one of like my go-to songs i don't know why it just hypes me up and about to see future he's coming to columbus so gonna go see him but a lot of people don't know that about me either but yeah. i definitely have uh that type of side in me as well <laughs> so i love it i love it and my family doesn't get it but uh, it's, again i absolutely love it uh Funny. talk to me tell tell us what is your go-to hype song or hype artist yeah Obviously, Lil Wayne. Like, yeah, crazy. <laughs> crazy, I love baby. Lil Wayne. Uh, greatest rapper alive. Okay. <laughs> yes, you heard it here first, but he's he's amazing. First of all, I love that his music is all like just freestyles. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, so I believe it. Right. Um, and I I love how confident he is in his lyrics. Mm. So I love Six Foot Seven Foot. That's like the song. Oh, I to all the time. <laughs> let's go. But recently, I've been really into like female rappers. Their songs okay. are so empowering. I know some people are gonna probably differ on that point, but they really empower and uplift women to remember yeah. our power. So Nicki Minaj, yeah, Nicki Stallion, yeah. I I love my rapper girls. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. So Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, Meg The Stallion. All the go to. Yeah. So for your Spotify, for your Apple music <laughs> playlists, yeah. we're here for it. We're here for it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> love it. Love it. So I, as we wrap up here, um, tell us, give us some advice uh, to lawyers that are wanting to start out their journey, uh, either debating going to law school or even what to do after law school. And even some of those entrepreneurs that, that want, need that kind of yes um, and looking to get their careers started in those paths. Yeah. Okay. So I think the biggest piece of advice I would give to entrepreneurs or attorneys, uh, anyone looking to kind of pave their own way, make their own path is just to really know who you are and stay true to yourself and know that you are going to face adversity, especially if you are a minority in any way, that there are going to be a lot of no's. Things are going to be tough, but you really need to stay focused and keep your eye on the prize and learn to enjoy that journey on the way. I love it. I love it. You heard it from the best guy, Castali. How can people get connected to you? Yeah. So if you want to reach me, you can follow me on all social media. My handle is GK Law Co. And also you can set up an appointment with me on my website at www.gklawco.com. Awesome. Definitely get connected. If you're looking for an amazing attorney uh, that needs help with, with starting a business, getting your trademarks, or looking at your terms and conditions, or any contracts, definitely hit up Gaia. She is my go-to attorney for all my other attorney friends. You guys are as well. So don't, don't worry. She's just, uh, it is great. So definitely get connected with her. But thank you all just for joining us today. Gaia, thank you so much for just sharing your story uh, about you, your family, your journey as an entrepreneur. Excited to continue help supporting you and seeing uh, where this continues to take us. Yeah. Thank you, Jordan. And you know what? Just a shout out to you for what you're doing, the awareness you're raising and just helping uplift our community like you know you should be proud too thank you for what you do thank you so much i appreciate it, it means it means the world to me so for those that are out there keep going never give up pursue that dream find your purpose your passion for life and keep chasing it don't ever give up don't give up
See you guys.